Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over a basic material that will let you have interactable foliage. So if we just press the play button here, you can just see there's some, some regular uh, wind sway, but if we walk through this you can see it's moving out of the way of our character. Now this is customizable with parameters, so you'll be able to have a much larger strength and you can have the radius of your uh, your character change depending on your needs. Obviously if you've got smaller uh, smaller grass you're not going to want it to move quite as much. If you've got larger foliage you're going to want it to move quite quite a ways. Um, so we're going to be making it parameterized so that you can customize this however you wish. Yay! Nice. Alright, before we begin, thank you to everybody that's head over to my Twitch channel and uh, followed me there and especially those who have subscribed over there it's absolutely awesome um the support that we've gotten over there so far i'm loving doing it it's an amazing amazing feeling just streaming every day um hoping to grow the channel a little bit more and give me more time to work on these tutorials for you guys all right so the foliage that i'm using here you can see is from the kite demo you can find that in just the learn tab or i think it's the learn tab uh, and then if you just search for foliage, you'll be able to find the kite demo or just search kite demo and you can download that to get the same foliage that I'm using here. And then we're just inside of environments, foliage, grass, field grass, and that's this stuff here. Now I have got it scaled up. The reason I've got it scaled up is because these are using planes. So if we were to open up the actual, actual mesh, I mean, it's a bit wonky in here right now. Uh, these are just planes. They're not individual blades of grass. Now, with planes, the the movement that you're going to get is going to be a little bit jankier than if you were making individual blades of grass, um, just because it's moving it in a, you know, the whole plane is moving um, rather than a singular piece of grass as you walk through it. So obviously the less clustered your grass, or rather the more clustered your grass and the less planes you're using, the better the effect is going to be. And obviously using individual meshes rather than planes is going to reduce your overdraw and just give you a bit of better performance. I'm just using this because I had it available and it's great for our example. So I'm actually going to leave the grass down. And what we're going to do is we're going to do very similar to what we did in the previous tutorial. So if I just keep this uh, little this little doofer here, this is going to be our little, um, little example. We're going to create a new material and we're going to call this interact underscore grass underscore m now I'm just going to open this guy up and now we're going to use uh, a texture here to get a base color and then we're just going to change our grass to be translucent and we'll put the opacity in and we'll just wait for this to update a little bit so I just want to make sure that we're getting the right, the right alpha out of there while that's doing that we'll minimize this down and we're going to create a uh, material parameter collection and we're going to call this interact underscore col oh we've uh, given that a capital o i don't want a capital o col this is just a collection of parameters we're going to open this up under vector parameters add a new array element drop this down and we're going to call this player location now you might already have one of these ready if you followed the last tutorial with the hexagons uh, is that the correct thing there? It is, but we need to turn this into two-sided. Two-sided, there we are. Cool, now we'll just apply that and let us do its thing. And we'll head back over to the collection real quick. So we've made our player location here. Now what we're going to do is we're just gonna go into our level blueprint and we're gonna get a way of updating that information by using this thing, which is what we built in the previous tutorial, but we're gonna go through it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out from event tick, set vector parameter value. And because we don't have a material set, it's going to give us a collection rather than an actual material. You can drag in the interact call that we've made into the collection, or you can use the dropdown menu to find it. Then under parameter name, we'll have a new dropdown and it will give us our player location that we just created. Give this a little click. Now what we want to do is right click, get player pawn. And from get player pawn, we want to get the actor location. Ooh, I've not seen it there, location, type it all in. And now we can plug this directly into parameter value and it will convert that for us. We can compile that and now that's going to update all the time. So 
we probably now won't get any interactivity from this grass. There you go, you can see the grass is no longer moving out of the way. And that's one hell of a difference, you, you can tell, I hope. <laughs> so, what are we going to do now? We are going to open up the interact grass material that we've just made. And unlike the hex gun, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own sphere mask. So what we need is to drag in our interact coal. It's going to have none. So in the left, under parameter, click player location. That's going to give us player location. So now this value is always going to be player location as it's based inside of our level blueprint. You don't have to build that inside the level blueprint. You can build that wherever you want to. I'm just using the level blueprint because it's a little bit easier for us to deal with. It means I haven't got to make a new blueprint and place it in the level. If you do put it inside of a blueprint, make sure that blueprint is somewhere inside the level so that you can use it. Now you can see here, this is a float four, and we don't actually need all four. Uh, values. So we're going to use a component mask and just get the R, G, and B. Now you can see here, the reason we're getting the R, G, B, let's explain that. Over here, underneath this little sphere that we've got, you can see we've got this X, Y, and Z, our coordinates, and you can see that these are color-coded. And that's that's it. Okay, so R, G, B can also represent X, Y, and Z. So we're using the R, G, B values, X, Y, and Z, and we don't need the alpha because there is no fourth coordinate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click and get a world position, there it is. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take from world position and we're going to subtract our player location. So we're going to compare the two. And what we're also going to do is we're going to check for distance. You want to scroll down to utility and use that distance node there and plug our RGB into the distance as well. So we're going to check the distance and then we're also going to be uh, removing them from each other. So they're constantly getting compared. From our subtract, what we want to do is we want to normalize this so that we can get a vector length. Now what we need is we're going to need some parameters to decide how large we want our sphere to be. Or rather, how how this is for the strength. This is for the strength of how much we want it to push our grass. So how much do we want to push our grass? Mm, hold S and left click. <laughs> Don't want that S. Hold S. Hold S and left click for a scalar parameter. And we're going to call this strength. And we're going to default this out at about 100. Then what we're going to do is we need to turn this into a set of three coordinates. Because you can see here we're going RGB, which is X, Y, and Z. And then we're just getting a singular value here. But what we need to do is we need to plug strength into all three coordinates. Now, we don't want to move on the z-axis. We don't want our grass to go up and down while we're pushing it. We only want it to be able to move away from our character. So we only want uh, an x and a y to, to receive any strength. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an append node here. Boop. And we're going to plug strength into both the A and the B. And because this is the first append, this is going to represent X and Y. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just copy the append, paste it, plug this into the A, and then just hold the one on left click for a constant and plug that into B. So now what we're getting is we're getting an X and a Y of 100 and a Z of zero. So we're getting three values here. The first two are representing X, Y, and then this one is Z. Now what we'll do is we'll hold M and left click for a multiply and plug those two in. So now it's going to get our vector and it's going to apply these numbers to the, sh to the, uh, the player location minus the world position. So now it's going to know how far to move things in the X and the Y coordinates. We're not moving it in the Z. As I say, we don't want anything to move up and down because that's just going to be a little bit weird. So now what are we going to do with this distance? Well, we need to know how far we want our player character to check for foliage before we push. If the foliage is too far away and we're pushing it, it's not going to make sense. And if it's really close and not quite pushing, that's also not going to make, it make any sense. So from our distance, we're going to divide. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a new scalar parameter. Hold S and left click. Plug this into the B. Call this distance. Oh, hello. Distance. And we're going to set this to a default of 256, which you may recognize is quite um, familiar from the mask that we made in the previous tutorial. That's going to represent the size of a sphere around our character that is going to push our foliage.
Now what we're going to do is we're just going to clamp these values to hold them within a certain range of 0 to 1. But we need to flip those around um, so that they're going in the right direction. R so rather than pulling inwards, we want to be pushing outwards. So we get in a 1 minus x. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply this by a texture coordinate. Now we're using a texture coordinate here just to make sure that we're not receiving a specific um, a specific texture coordinate from our our mesh. So we're going to hold T. No, we're not. <laughs> we're going to hold U and left click, and we're just going to leave this as it is. But we're just going to compound our green channel. Ooh, rather, we only yes, we want the green channel. We just want the green. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip that around with a one minus x. So hold uh, O and left click. It's O, not a zero. O. And we're going to just multiply that by itself to give it a greater value. Multiply this into our previous multiply. Blech, there we go. For our sphere mask. And then what we're going to do is finally multiply these two things together. Then we will plug this into our world position offset. Now it's probably going to be compiling because that's quite a lot to update right there. So we'll just give that a second, right? So it's working here. You can see it's in, it's in here, and it's like, yay, grass two-sided. Huzzah! Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right-click the interact grass, create a material instance, so that we can quickly parameterize things. Turn on both distance and strength. We'll save that real quick. Open up the grass, and we'll just make sure that material instance is inside all of these materials. There we are. And we'll just quickly wait for that to update. And then once we've got this working and we can see it moving the grass around, I'll show you guys how to add wind to it as well. Because you don't want your grass to just be static if there's no character in there. Righto. So it's looking a little bit different. Let's press play. You can see it's moving our grass, but very, very lightly. You can see that moving. See that? So what we can do is we can go into the interact grass and we can actually just bump this up a bit. So let's see, 150. Might be a bit, a bit extreme that number, but there we go. There we go, you can see it's all moving out of the way now. Cool. You see it moving. Let's see if we can match the previous numbers. We had 100. So I had a much smaller distance on the previous. So if we turn the distance down, there we go. So it's going to pull things closer together. There we are. You can see we're getting a much nicer result now. See that moving? Isn't that nice? Really quite a simple um, shader. And it's moving all this grass around. Yay! Now, I'm not quite sure how obvious it's going to be on the video, but if we come over here, you can see this, particularly when we've isolated a bit. When you come through here and there's quite a lot of noise, the video doesn't really pick it up too well. But you can see that it's pushing foliage out of the way. Which is pretty cool. What we can then do is we can... Yeah, what we can then do is we can go back into our lovely little um, material. And we can right click and search for a grass wind. We'll get a simple grass wind node. And then we're just going to hold A and left click for an add. Plug our previous multiply into the add and the simple grass wind into the add. Then plug this into the world position offset. We're going to get some errors because we don't have any values here. So hold one and left click three times. And we're going to plug one of each into wind intensity, wind weight, and additional uh, world position offset. I'm just going to set these to maybe 0.1 for the world position offset, 0.1 for the weight, and 0.5 for the intensity. Now obviously you can hold S and left click for scalars instead so that you can have these totally customizable inside of your instance as well. I don't really need that right now so I'm not going to bother doing that. Here we go, you can see here on the little, a little doofer here, we're getting a little wibble wobble. A little doofer, we're getting a wibble wobble. Man, talking nonsense, so much nonsense. 
just quickly open up the previous. I'm feeling like it's getting a different color. Ah, we've got some roughness in this one. Ba -ba 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 -ba. What's our difference over here? Surface masked. Oh, I was just masking it out, the other one wasn't translucent. Right. Let's change that back to masked and plug this into the opacity mask. That's why we're getting a totally different color. What a dope. We'll press apply. Wait for that to catch up. Now shader compiling always takes a little bit longer when you're messing with translucency or opacity. There we go, we've got some thicker grass now. Might be able to see it a little better now. No wonder it was looking a little bit weird. I used the wrong type of opacity. So we'll just wait for that to update. Whenever you're ready, grass. There we are, much nicer. Roughness is up there. <laughs> Crying out loud. Roughness. Yeah. Get in there. You're not rough, you're grass. There you are. Or rather, you are rough, you're grass. Shiny, shiny grass. Just glass glinting in the morning dew. So let's press play. Wait for this to compile. There we go. You see that's pushing it out of the way now. It's really nice now that we've got the translucency sorted. It's a really, really awesome, really quick trick to do without having to get any bones in there or have physics enabled or any of this moving foliage in and out of place, depending on what you need. Uh, it's just really simple. For something that, you know, it's one of those details that in most games is negligible. I think this is quite a quick and easy solution. Especially if you just want to give your, your game or your scene a little bit of extra life. And obviously you can customize the wind. That's a bit staticky right now. The way it's bobbing around. But it's working nicely. And it's doing what we need it to do. Yay. So, hopefully, um, some of you guys can find that useful. I've got my character speed down low, by the way. So we weren't running through here at like 3,000 pixels. Um, hopefully some of you guys will find that useful. Um... Hopefully you've learned some stuffs. Uh, I've got some people that want me to do a new series. Um, they want me to collect some of your projects from everybody. Um, and then do like a little review, like open your projects up. Record me messing around with them and then give you feedback. I'm happy to do so. Um, if you want to do that, then please head to the description. There's going to be a link to my Discord, and I'll make a channel in that Discord specifically for leaving links to your projects so that we can check them out on video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys and gals. Uh, I'll see you next time.